Good morning, kia ora. We'll give you a proper welcome later on in the meeting. But this is just some, a little preliminary, just to let you know what's, what's happening, okay? Uh, and we'll get rid of the housekeeping stuff now too. So just a reminder, we are in orange, all right? Hooray! Yeah. Um, which means we encourage you to wear masks, but it's not mandatory, all right? So it's what you're comfortable with. But I encourage you to respect people's personal space, all right? So that's, that's really important. Um, just please, gentle reminder also to put your phones either on silent or turn them off. Thank you. <laughs> so it may be that we're having a pofferty. Um, Captains Naomi and Nathan have already had their official pofferty. That happened on Thursday with the staff here on site and uh, folk from the bridge program and family store. So they are already part of us, all right? So the pofferty this morning is for our new divisional commanders. Now, for those of you who are new to the Salvation Army and all our terminology, that means that they are responsible for the, all Salvation Army activity. That's not just churches, but it's all our community ministries, our bridge programs. They have the overall oversight from Kaitaia to Pukekohe, all right? So it's a huge responsibility. But it's not just administration. They are the pastors, particularly to their officer staff, and to everybody else as well. So that's their role. And so we are welcoming them onto our place in their role. So for some of you who haven't been part of a pofferty before, I'll just run through quickly what, what we're going to do. We're not having an extended pofferty this morning, but you'll hear the, the women uh, call and welcome and invite our visitors with the karanga. Um, they, will, they will come in and be escorted there and seat on this side. They're the manahiri, they're the visitors. The group on this side are the tangata whenua, the home people who already are part of the place. We have our standing already on this ground, right? So when they're seated, um, Trevor is, is going to start from this side, from the tangata whenua, he will have a karakia, There'll be, he will speak, there'll be, um, be some waiata through. Um, and then, so from this side, there's going to be Trevor to speak and Nathan to speak. From this side, it'll be Captain David Daly, all right, and he will respond and they will have a waiata too. Um, when we are singing the waiata, particularly from the home group, if you know them, you're welcome to stand and join because you are the tangata whenua, okay? Is that enough explanation? Okay. Thank you.
process off. We're going to start off with our waiata for Kāri and Mai, and then we're going to uh, have the Lord's Prayer. Uh, I will um, say it in Māori, but I'll invite you all to um, say the prayer as you feel. Uh, kia ora whānau. <coughs> Tomatoma Aua huki mātou e kauea ki a whakawaia, e ngāri whakorangi a mātou i te kino. No huki te rangatiratanga, te kaha, me te kororia. Ake, ake, ake. Amen. E noho whanau. Atuia. Ki te rangi, tuia ki te whenua, tuia ki nga nākau o ngā tangata, ko te mea nui, ko te aroha. It is written in the sky, it is written in the lands, it is written on the hearts of God's people. What is the greatest thing? It is the love, it is the love, it is the love of God. A tihei wā mauri ora. Uh, te mihi tua tahi, i o mātua nui te rangi, e pā, te kaihanga o tēnei ao, te timutanga me te whakamutunga, e whakanui ake ki a koe e pā. Te mihi tua rua, kraiti ihu, te kaiwhaka ora ki a, ki a mātou, te kingi o ngā kingi, te āriki o ngā ariki, e honore me kororia tuna ingoa. Te mihi tua toru, te wairua tapu, te kaiako. A nau mai haere mai, nau mai haere mai tō aroaro, nau mai haere mai tō ahi, kei roto i tēnei whare, me ēnei heningaro, tīnana, wairua. Ngā manu hiri hau, ko tai mai nei i tēnei ata, Ngā mi. So, first and foremost, we acknowledge our Father God, uh, 
creator of all, the beginning, the end. And we exalt him. We exalt his name in everything we think, everything we say, and everything we do. Secondly, we acknowledge our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And we honour and glorify him in everything we think, everything we say, and everything we do. Thirdly, we acknowledge the Holy Spirit, our teacher, our comforter. And we invite his presence into this fare uh, today, into this house of God today, into our hearts, our minds, our bodies. Anoreira. Um, Naranga tira o te tai tokero, me te tamaki makaro, David Rawa Kudanis, Namihi Mahana, I know my hide and might, know my hide and my kite kite upe faka ora ki fangare, know my hide and my kairo to ite rango Mahana o te nei fano, I know my hide and my kairo ite ite kuro wai o te. Aroha mi te rangi Māori e. Nga mihi mahana. So I just, I'd like to take this time to acknowledge our new divisional commanders, uh, Captain David and Denise, uh, for the Northern Division. And we just welcome you here. Uh, we warmly embrace you into our whānau, into this church, our whānau. Um, and especially under the cloak of our, our Lord God, peace and love. Uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, must have been a bit nervous, but I'd like to also acknowledge our manuhiri who are the first time today. And again, we extend that warm embrace to you. And so we, look, we look forward to uh, catching up, uh, seeing you more. Nō reira a whānau, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Uh, nō reira ngā rangatira hau o tēnei hahi, uh, Nathan, rawa ko Naomi, um, me tō tamariki, uh, ngā mihi aroha, uh, nō mai haere mai, uh, e harikoa ngā nākau uh, ki e mātou i, i te kaupapa o tēnei rā, uh, nō reira tēnā uh, korua, tēnā korua. And so I'd just like to again extend that welcome that we had for Nathan and uh, Captains Nathan and Naomi, uh, who are the new, uh, who are to be installed as the new core mission leaders for Whangarei. Um, and we also extend that welcome to their um, children. Um, and our hearts are full today as we come together to support and celebrate <coughs> your installation. Uh, nō reira uh, te whanau, O te ope whaka ora ki whangarei, ngā mihi, ngā mihi, ngā mihi. Um, nō reira, kia kaha, kia maia, kia manawa nui. Uh, so to our family, our friends uh, from Whangarei Kō, I also wish to uh, acknowledge you here today as we uh, come together to welcome um, Captains David and Denise and also to celebrate with Captains uh, Nathan and Naomi in their installation. And as we move forward, be strong, be steadfast, and be willing. Nō reira whānau, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a tēnā tātou katoa.
tātai hono, te hunga mate ki te hunga mate, hāpiti hono, tātai hono, te hunga ora ki te hunga ora. Uh, kia ora whānau. Tēnā katoa, katoa, ko ōpoki te mawa mona, ko hakatiri te awa, ko uri uri airani ahu, no tak hakatiri ahu, ko Denise toko fit wahini, he papa ahu, he kodo ahu, ko David toko ingoa, i mihi mahanui mahan, mahana. Kia katoa. Good morning, each one. I'll repeat that. Opuki, or Mount Hutt, is the mountain that I was raised under in those mountains of the Southern Alps. Hakateri, or Ashburton River, is the river that nurtured my family for four generations. I am, however, a descendant of Ireland. I was born in and am from Ashburton. Denise is my wife. I am a dad to three daughters and a grandfather to three mokapunu. My warmest greetings to you all. Trevor, thank you for your welcome. And uh, we are delighted to be here. This is our first official Sunday on deck uh, as divisional leaders for the Northern Division. Uh, so we're, thank you. <laughs> so we're delighted to be here this weekend and to be able to install Nathan and Naomi. It's a real privilege to be able to do that. Uh, one of the things that I also wanted to say and a welcome to is I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Terry Ellis, uh, which is Naomi's dad, right? I've got this. So, Terry, lovely to see you again. We had dinner last night together, uh, but I just wanted to make a, a warm welcome to Terry being here to support Naomi and the family uh, and their installation as well. And uh, Terry is an Anglican minister in Pyro. So, lovely to have you here this morning. Uh, one of the things that is always constant within the Salvation Army, as many of you will know, is change. Uh, appointment time is one of those things where change happens often frequently, hopefully a little longer for most people, but uh, often can be quite quick. But we are um, delighted that change is something that we know can be also a good thing. And uh, so it opens new opportunities, new ways of being, uh, and so I really pray that for Whangarei as you have new leaders, that as you have new parts of the building still to be opened as well, that there'll be a real sense of that ongoing work, this new stage of what God will do in the midst of the people here in this community. I think the word change has been constant in my head for the last two years with COVID. Uh, in my previous appointment, I seemed to be most days of my week was occupied somewhere with what was happening with COVID or the changes that we needed to make as the, as the, as the Salvation Army in the way that we operated or serviced the people that we, we did within our communities. Um, I had a number of calls last year with the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet with one of the staffers there as they drafted the guidelines for the gatherings like we are today. Uh, and it was interesting that so often there was confusion. There was also uh, things that didn't quite line up. And the, the word that the lady, her name was Libby, that I spoke to said often to me was, this will inevitably change. It was something she kept coming back to. This is not going to be the point that it's going to be. It's going to change and we'll change it as it goes through. So it's something that we learn and grow with. So, the thing that I've been, been thinking about and I share with you this morning is that in all that we do of our plans and all of the things that we've done over these last few years, we've had to hold it with very open hands because things changed. But one thing that I know that I could hold on to firmly was the promises of God. They are sure. They are steadfast. And so I encourage you again, as we enter into 2022, hold on to the promises of God. They will sustain us and they will see us through until we get back to some kind of new normality that will see us being the people of God that he wants us to be. So God bless you. Thank you, each one. Kia ora.
Kia ora. He mihi ki te, uh, ki te atua, te mātua, te tama, te wairua tapu, he mihi ki te haonga mā, te haere, haere, haere a te rā. Tēnā koutou katoa, e nā rangatira o te ope whakaora, um, te tai tokoro, tamiki makoro. Welcome to the family. Um, some of you are probably wondering, who's this fella, and why is he speaking on our behalf? Well, I moved to Whangarei, and Thursday I was wandering down the street, saw the Salvation Army, thought I'd come in for a food parcel. <laughs> Some beautiful women were outside, and they were like, hi day, hi day, and I was just like, you know, I came in, and don't hide, I mind if I do, you know, looked around, and... No, I'm just kidding. Um, I never did get that food parcel, so we'll have some chats. Um, I'm Nathan. Kia ora. Want to acknowledge uh, David and Denise. Welcome to the division. Welcome to a new home. Want to acknowledge all of those who have come before us. Um, many, many people have laid foundations here, uh, not just those who have passed on from this earth, but Peter and Jenny. Uh, David and Kath uh, Darren and Kathy Elkington, Alan and Linda Bateman, Craig and Sharon Millington, all going all the way back to the late 1800s when Bill and Allison were the officers here. <laughs> um, he's still alive. This isn't Weekend at Bernie's, folks. So, um, now, kia ora. We acknowledge all those who have come before and acknowledged uh, today that we continue to move forward in the, the mission of Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah, welcome all of you. Me saying welcome, and I just arrived. Welcome to you, David and Denise. Tēnā koutou kato. Kia ora. So we'll stand and sing. What are we singing? Hūtia. <laughs> Take a little, we'll take a little break. They're gonna come and uh, pronounce it for me. How do you do? How do you do? That's a great way to remember it. That's perfect. Yeah, so, um, and then we're gonna, we're just gonna pop out back for a little uh, to, to kind of solidify this time. KFC, yeah. Morning KFC, we, is that what we're doing? Um, and, and, but we'll, uh, you guys stay here, make yourselves comfortable. We'll be back soon enough. Kia ora. You should all feel very, very welcome. 
You had lots of welcomes. But it is, it's just a joy to be back together again. And uh, now that David and Denise and, and uh, Nathan and Naomi, they are part of us. They belong to us. They've been welcomed with araha, and so they come, they can now stand where we stand. They are now one with us, and they come under our protection also in this whare. So we are, you're no longer manahiri, you're whanau. It's lovely to have you. And it's also lovely to have the, the music team and the band back. Um, The fact that you, you are human and you do need a holiday, but it's just lovely to have you back. And thank you particularly to Sal for leading us through in lots of the holiday time. So it's lovely to have the music team back as well. And we just look forward to your ministry, to, firstly to the Lord and then to us, to help us in our worship in this year. Lord bless you as you use your gifts for him. Shall we pray? And so, Holy Spirit, you have already been welcomed into this place. We thank you that there are no restrictions when it comes to you. We don't have to put on a mask or be in a special place, but wherever we are, you are welcome because we belong to you and you belong to us. And so we acknowledge you here this morning as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we want to honour you with our worship. We want you to feel um, at home with us, Abba Father. May we hear from you today. We open our lives and our hearts, our minds, our spirits to you today. Teach us, guide us, confirm in us the things that we already know. Teach us new stuff. But most of all, we acknowledge that you are the great one. Thank you for having us in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. In case you don't know, I'm Sally, or Sal, whichever you wish. Um, I'd just like to continue that welcome. And um, you, in case you don't feel quite welcomed yet, you are welcome here, whether you this is your first Sunday here ever, or whether you were born here, and this is your place since birth, or anywhere in between, you are welcome. This place is your home for here, for just for now, if need be, or for a lifetime. Up to you. But you feel welcome this morning. I just want to, I just want to ask, there's, there's just something going on this morning that there's some leaders, there's a little alliteration going on. There's a David and Denise. There's a Nathan and Naomi. Are there others? I know there's a Gail and a Gary, and there's a Shane and Sally. Are there anyone else that is married that have, like, alliterations in their name? Or is this just a thing, just, oh, a few? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, yes, there are a few. Yeah, I just wonder what the leadership's going on, that there's something going on with the alliteration this morning. Anyway, rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Our God is the ultimate art artist of celebration, the inventor of the party, and the healer of the broken. As we worship together this morning in the presence of God, responding to his greatness with adoration, praise, gratitude, we should be a people filled with relentless joy. Celebration occurs all throughout the scripture. Beautiful examples of people being reminded and in turn reminding one another of who God is and what he has done. In Exodus 23, the Israelites were given specific instructions to celebrate throughout the year as a reminder of what God has done. In Acts 2, we get a glimpse into how the early church celebrated when they met together to praise God. But unfortunately, the heaviness of life has a way of cultivating seriousness and draining childlike wonder from us. You agree? Yeah, yeah, we get into that drudgery. As a church family, how do we remind ourselves we still have a reason to sing? How do we remind ourselves we still have a reason to sing? Jesus invites us to hold the tension between celebration and lament, knowing that he is above it all. 
The invitation to celebration is not an invitation to be false or to wear a fake smile. That's easy done, isn't it? But in all circumstances, rejoice always in gathered worship when we hear our friends, our family, our neighbours, voices we know and trust, declaring the goodness and the promises of God, reminding us that even in our brokenness, our God is with us. In worship, we come to with a gospel worth celebrating before a celebrating king, and our response as worshippers, worship, worshippers should be obvious. As we begin to make move back into the rhythms of gathered worship, as we are doing today, many of us haven't been here for a year or for months because of COVID. Let's get back into the rhythm of gathered worship. Let's be ready to celebrate, to give thanks and praise to God because of who he is. And as we recommit all that we have to him in response to all he has done for us, let us rejoice in the knowledge that even as an imperfect, broken people, he's not finished with us yet. Let's stand. We're going to worship our king. standing because we're going to carry on singing for the music team we're going to continue singing we're going to sing to you the song that we sang earlier in the in the porphyry we're going to continue that and use that as a real worship song this morning yeah we has already introduced this beautiful worship song um, to us this morning and we are going to continue that and just invite you to come into the presence of god this morning however you want to however you feel that you need to um I often get the words a little bit mixed up in this song, but it has come to me um, recently that I sing, there is one God, and it is your God. It's supposed to be love, but God is love. So it doesn't matter actually how you sing it. There is one God. It is our God. It is your God. And He is not a God that's far away he wants to be right here with you today, he wants to be right here as close as he can possibly be living in us. So whatever word you choose to sing today, there is one love and it is your love. There is one God and it is your God. It doesn't matter. Just join with us in worship this morning. Talk. 
Sing those words again together.
just bless you this morning how beautiful it is to worship him together again. Lord, I thank you for being faithful over this time. Lord, I thank you for meeting with groups as they met together in smaller groups. But Lord, there is nothing like coming together and lifting our voices and lifting our praise to you. And we feel you in this place. Lord, may our praise be acceptable to you. May our hearts be acceptable to you. And Lord, as we continue in this way and we hear from your word and as we hear from Nathan and Naomi, Lord, that you will give us spiritual ears, ears to hear. Lord, that we will just um, take from their words what you want us to have, Lord, this morning. We are so grateful. I am so grateful. And Lord, just want to tell you again that we love you. Amen. This morning the band's going to play a message. The first message of the year. Amen. Um, and while the band's playing, I ask that you come and give your tithes and offerings and pop them in this, these baskets here. Um, just a little different to what we usually do, but let's do it this way this morning, thank you. Just didn't recognise my voice. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi. But it is, as we've said before, it's a real privilege for Denise and I to be here this morning for this installation of Nathan and Naomi uh, to, as core mission leaders for the Whangarei Core. I'm going to ask Denise just to read some verses from Scripture, from Ephesians 4, some selected verses, and then we will uh, go through the installation. I'm reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, verse 7, and then verses 12 to 13. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Verse 7, However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ, 
This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Amen. Captains Naomi and Nathan, as Salvation Army officers, you have been given a responsibility and challenge by your leaders as you now undertake your new roles as core mission leaders of the Whangarei Corps in the New Zealand, Fiji, Tonga and Samoa Territory. You are called as leaders of God's people here in Northland and of our mission to care for people, transform lives and reform society. In this role, you will be required to faithfully preach and teach God's word, to pastor and to visit your people in their homes, to lead and to equip them to live for God and to reach out within the local community in embodying the practical and transforming love of Jesus Christ. You will also be required to oversight the proper administration of your appointment and faithfully steward its resources in all its varied programs and activities. These are significant responsibilities for which you will require divine grace and divine wisdom. Do you affirm your readiness to lean upon God to support you in these tasks? You are called to preach the truths of scripture which you are pledged to uphold as the basis of all Salvation Army teaching. Into your care is entrusted the bread of life to break among the people. In the pages of God's word are words of comfort for the sorrowing, words of assurance to those who doubt, words of guidance to those who seek, and words of life to those who have no hope. Do you promise to uphold the Bible as the only divine rule of Christian faith and practice? We serve under the army flag, whose colours represent the essential themes of the army's message of the blood of Christ, of holy living in this present world, of the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Will you strive to be true to these purposes and to be living examples of their reality? We are called to seek and save the lost, the broken, the vulnerable. Through your ministry, disciples will be filled with the Holy Spirit. People will find wholeness and hope, and the wider community will be transformed by the presence of God's people in its midst. Will you make the invitation to faith and the offering of practical compassion an important focus of your ministry? And here before you, a representative group of the people of the Northern Division, alongside whom you are now called to minister. Will you endeavour at all times to be true, to be true spiritual guides and to faithfully serve among them in the spirit of Christ? Will you join them in offering hope and abundant life to the community? To the soldiers and friends of this congregation of God's people, Will you each warmly accept Captains Naomi and Na Nathan Holt as they now come to work among you as core mission leaders of the Whangarei Corps? I've been encouraged by that response. The charge to you both in recognising your willing response to the challenges presented by your new appointments. I now charge you in the presence of God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit to uphold the promises you have made today regarding your new appointments as the core mission leaders of the Whangarei Corps and to be true to your calling as Salvation Army officers. Denise is going to offer in a moment a prayer of dedication for Nathan and Naomi, and I'd invite the leaders of the Corps to come and gather around them. And Terry, I'd really like for you to come and stand with Naomi as well as her dad. And as, they, as Denise prays, maybe you'd like to put your hands upon them and pray with Denise as she prays this prayer of dedication. So the leaders within the Corps, please come and join us as well. Thank you. 
children pray. Lord God our Father, we thank you for your church, for the apostles and all who through the centuries kept the faith bright and shining. We thank you for good men and women and for all the movements used by you to extend your kingdom on earth. We thank you for the Salvation Army worldwide and for the Salvation Army in Whangarei, and now for Nathan and Naomi who stand here in a continuing response to your call. And we also pray for their sons, for Joey and Noah. Be with them each. Inspired by our heritage, empowered by your Holy Spirit, and supported by the people who surround them just now, may they be a means of leading souls to Jesus Christ. Grant them spiritual wisdom, understanding, courage, and unfailing love in their great task. And I ask this in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So Captain Naomi, sorry, Captains Naomi Holt, Captain Nathan Holt, I now install you as the core mission leaders of Whangarei Corps of the Northern Division. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I now call upon this congregation to receive your new leaders as from the Lord and to be loyal to them and to support them in prayer and practice. May God bless Captains Naomi, Naomi and Nathan Holt. May God bless the Northern Division, its soldiers, friends and young people. And may God be blessed to bless, or pleased to bless the Salvation Army. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Would you welcome? Thank you. It's good to be home. Uh, excuse me if I seem emotional. I, I get particularly emotional when I feel like the Holy Spirit's up to something. So sorry about it. Not my fault. Um, so if you see me crying, it's either that or I just stub my toe real bad. So check the toe first and then we'll just embrace the Holy Spirit as we go. So Matthew 18, Jesus is, is about to, he's about to go, and he leaves his disciples with a call. Therefore, go make, make people from all nations into disciples, immersing them into the reality of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I will be with you always, yes, even to the end of the age. Um, Naam and I decided that we wanted to start our first Sunday with you by, by setting some expectations. Some, some, uh, we want to communicate some things, and this is going to be an ongoing process for us. Um, so I just want to share a bit about who I am and what you can expect from me. Um, it's it's going to be in kind of an order, but then we're just going to like throw some other things out there. Um, so just I guess just be ready. Um, I'm a big believer in, uh, in values, and you see, we all function on values, and every decision we make is based on the values that we carry. And if you don't know your values on purpose, your default value as a human being is self-preservation, right? So um, if I don't think about what I value, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna default to like, what's gonna keep me the most safe or give me the most gain? Right? So I'm a big believer that everybody in this room should go through a process of figure out what you're about. And when you have to make a decision, go back to those values. So I'm going to share with you my values, and these are the ministry values that I function by. Uh, number one is that Jesus is Lord. Now that is a simple statement filled with about 2,000 plus years of complexity. Um, Jesus was not from Aotearoa. Jesus was not Pakia. Jesus was a Jewish man in an ancient Palestinian culture. And, and then we've grabbed that Bible that was, that was to those people and we've put it through 2,000 years of interpretation. So it's complicated. But my goal is to always go back to Jesus. I obsessively study the Gospels because they're fun. 
Um, and because I want to know and I want to make sure that my value is always that Jesus is Lord of my life. What you'll find is that your value statements as well as mine are just as much about what the value is as what the values are not. So me claiming Jesus is Lord is me also claiming that other things are not Lord, including myself. Um, when, you, when you attend here on a Sunday, if, if I'm teaching, you have my commitment to teach from the Bible, and, uh, and I go on a journey. I'm always on a journey. I think the Bible is, is the most fun book to study ever. Um, and I go on a journey with the Bible, and when I speak with you here, um, I'm just going to be sharing with you the journey. I believe that one of the responsibilities we have as people of God is to dig into his word like it's an adventure and then to show people what you've discovered. So you'll have that from me. Um, I'm not infallible. Um, I, I was trained and I have a diploma of biblical studies, um, but I don't have a special anointing of the Bible that anyone here does not have. I am not a truth that doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, and you are fully allowed to, and I encourage you to question my theology. I'm a strong believer in what I call theological sparring, and that's that you and I can create a safe environment where you and I can debate about scripture because this is what's been done for 2,000 years. It's an ancient practice that's still enjoyable if we're in a safe environment to do so. And the reason it's sparring is because there, there might get to a point when you're theologically sparring where somebody just needs to tap out and that means, hey, I think we're done here. And that's fine. And what you'll get from me if you, want to, if you want to discuss scripture, which I strongly encourage, is we'll get a back and forth, but you are safe, you are secure, you will not be excommunicated, you will not be rebuked, you will not be kicked out. And I hope you don't do the same to me. <laughs> the issue with Jesus as Lord and following Jesus is that dude got killed, so... It's iffy. Um, we, we have our moments. You also have my commitment not to use the Bible as a tool. I don't believe the Bible is a tool to be used. I believe the Bible is the word of God and it's its own thing and it's its own adventure. And discovering that is the fun. So you have my commitment not to try to use the Bible for things. One of my other values is that of disciple making. I believe that that is the primary activity of, of a salvationist. Um, you have my commitment to prioritize disciple making. And what I mean by that is I'm prior prioritizing disciple making above simply the running of programs. Um, what I believe is that everything we do in the Salvation Army should have the primary focus of making disciples. And I don't just mean that we all as, as leaders work really hard to disciple others, you also have my commitment to invest in you as a disciple, right? So my goal is not to burn you out, but to continue to encourage you to grow and develop and get closer to God and get closer to the ministry that God has for you. So uh, you can call me out if you feel like I'm burning you out and not investing enough in you. Because my goal is to invest in you so that you may invest in others. Um, I believe that a better you is a better us. I believe that the Salvation Army only exists when its soldiers are active. I believe that the Salvation Army is nothing without the people on the ground doing the work. And I will always, as your, uh, your core mission leader, define the Fangare Corps' work by your work. So when I represent your work to divisional headquarters, territory headquarters, I will be telling your stories. That's a commitment you have from me. Um, I also believe, and this, you know, I think some people find this harsh. I believe that uh, I call it the 30-30 investment rule. And uh, what I believe is that up to the age of 30, um, you, your primary investment should actually be in yourself. Okay, because that's when you can do all sorts of stuff. I believe in, uh, and I remember when I was young and I was naive and I was invincible. All right, and those two things mean that you can do a whole lot of stuff. 
And when you get older, you start to realize you're probably not invincible and you were really naive. And then you start to get a lot more, you know, your family and you get responsibilities and you gotta pay bills and stuff like that. So you start to think a different way. But up to the age of 30, you're kind of just invincible and you can just go for glory, right? But then once you're past 30, you're kind of just dying, right? I mean, that's what I, that's what I went through. When I hit 30, I was like, well, now it's just the end of my life, one day at a time. And so um, my belief in that is that once you're past 30, your best investment is in other people. Okay, that's the best return on investment is find some crazy, young, naive, invincible young person and pour into them everything that you learned up to that age. Now, if you make it past 33, you beat Jesus. So, well... Well done there. I strongly believe, my third value is I strongly believe in the ministry of all believers. Um, I do not believe, now some might know it as the priesthood of all believers. I like to use the term ministry because I believe that every single person in this room is called by God to make a difference in this world. You are called, you are equipped, you are anointed. It is your mission. I believe that if you want to figure out what your ministry is, you need to think about what breaks your heart and you think about what you love. You use what you love to defeat what breaks your heart. That's ministry in a nutshell. If you love horses and loneliness breaks your heart, go ride horses with lonely people. What I believe is that if you go do what you feel called to do, if you invest yourself into those spaces that you have a broken heart, God will bring you the people. I've never not seen that happen. If you don't know what breaks your heart, watch documentaries until you cry through an entire one. All right, that's the, that's the key. You'll be watching it and you'll just be in tears and the person sitting next to you will be like, what's your problem? Well, it's because it's not their ministry, it's yours. It's not their calling, it's yours. It means I also believe that not every single person in this room should have the same passion and the same heartbreak. But this is what makes the army. I strongly believe in the ministry of all believers. I don't believe that you are here to take part in the ministry of Nathan Holt. You are take part in your ministry. And it's my job to make sure that you are equipped and free to do that. My next value is I strongly believe in incarnational mission. I believe that God has you where you are when you're supposed to be there. I believe that you are called not to, I believe this building is cool. I really like this building. This is a fun place to worship. This is a fun place to be. But your ministry is wherever you are. If God has you in a place, it's because he wants you to change that place for the kingdom. I've met far too many people in my life who are still waiting for God to move them. Don't. Chase God where you are. I strongly believe in incarnational mission. You don't have to come here and be in this building to serve God. You serve God wherever there are people, wherever your passion and your heartbreak collide. My next value is that I believe that it is a basic human right for everyone to be part of community and for everyone to feel that they belong. I believe that everything you do and every place you find yourself is an opportunity for you to create family. I believe that everything you do and everywhere you find yourself is an opportunity to have another home and an opportunity to feel like you belong. And everybody here has a thing that they're passionate about that no one else in the room understands at all. There are some people in here who love fishing and could talk about fishing all day. And I'm telling you right now, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> And there are other people in here who love dancing, or who love horses, or who love music, or who love video games, or who love sports, and you exist in a universe that you're supposed to find community and you're supposed to find belonging in. You see, God and Jesus is incarnate. He lives in amongst, but he is also not confined. Wherever you find yourself, whatever you enjoy, that is home, that is community, that is belonging, that is family, that's God moving. Some things about, uh, about community, um, and Sally talked about this already. Uh, I believe that if we're not having fun, we're doing it wrong. We're gonna have hard days, there's gonna be hard things, 
But overall, if we're not having fun, we're doing it wrong. God did not give us mission so that we would be miserable. I know the Bible talks about persecution. I know the Bible talks about things being hard, but Sally already talked about it. They made a law about parties. That was built into the law. You will party. <laughs> All right, I have this rule with my kids. We have a bunch of rules, family rules, but rule number one is party. If we're not having fun, we're doing it wrong. If this is miserable, we're doing it wrong. If we hate this, we're doing it wrong. If we dread worshiping God, we're doing it wrong. If we dread walking into our ministry, we're doing it wrong. If we're not having fun, something's wrong. Another rule I have is the two dinner rule. Uh, and this is a rule about protecting belonging, protecting fauna. If you have an issue with someone, you need to have, to, you have, you share a meal with them twice. The first meal you have with them, you are not allowed to bring up the issue. The second meal you have with them, if the issue still exists, you can talk it through. But in that first meal, your goal is to understand their name and understand their story. And nine times out of 10, if you understand somebody's name and somebody's story, you will understand the issue. And you'll just be like, oh, it's kind of just my issue. Now, if right now you're thinking, oh, but I have an issue with them. I don't want to have a meal with them. Well, then you don't care about them enough to, to help them through an issue, do you? Right? That's my test. If I'm not willing to share a meal with someone, then I don't care enough about them to pretend like I love them and try to, and, and trying to correct them. So two meals, if you got an issue. Now, in the Bible, it talks, it, there's a process in Matthew 18, and it ends up you know, coming to us. If you come to me and say, I've got an issue with this person, the first question I'm gonna ask you is, how many meals are you down? Have you opened your home to this person? What is their name? What is their story? What do you know about this person? If you can't tick those off, then that's where you start. Um, gossip kills community, blame kills community. If something goes wrong, I wanna know why it went wrong, but I don't wanna know who's to blame. I'm not interested in who we blame. I'm interested in what was the issue and how do we solve it. Okay? My final, uh, my final value is that I believe in organic, simplistic, sustainable ministry and life. Um, organic meaning let things happen. Just let it happen. Don't try to force stuff. Just let things happen. Whatever ministry God has in front of you, do that one. Whatever people God has, has brought in front of you, let it happen. Those are your people. Those are your people right now. Keep it simple. Um, often our, our temptation is to be like, we want to solve this problem. Let's go like full bore. Let's spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, let's like, do that. You know, like that's what, we, that's what we've tended to do in the Salvation Army over the last few decades. We throw money. All right? I've been guilty of that. And, uh, and what we do is we're just like, let's just go for it. But we, what we're going to ask you to do is if you feel like there's something God is calling you to, what's the simplest way for me to accomplish this? And I think discipleship is a good one. We could run a huge discipleship program. We could set up huge discipleship programs. But the easiest, most efficient way to, have, to do discipleship is one-on-one -on -one over a coffee for an hour. Simple, costs you five bucks, depending on where you go. And it's an hour of discipleship. Keep it simple, keep it sustainable. And I don't just mean financially, I also mean that, uh, that you please don't burn yourself into the ground. All right, we need to look after the sustainability of not only our resources, but also our people. So those are my values, and those are the things that you can expect from me. Um, I guess my final one, and it's not really in my values list, but it is something I strongly believe in, is I strongly believe in a, a, a co-governed Aotearoa. I strongly believe in, uh, in the potential of the pursuit of, t of a Tariti partnership. I believe that we have a unique opportunity in this world and that if we can figure out, and it's an everyday journey and I don't think it'll ever be done, if we can figure out co-governance, if we can figure out biculturalism, if we can tr figure out what the potential of the Tariti partnership offers us in New Zealand, we will be world-changing kingdom bringers. 
I'm happy to talk to you about that if that's an issue for you. I'm just going to pass it on to Naomi now. She will answer all of your questions. <laughs> Hold on. Tina Koto, Itifano, or Ihukaraiti. Call Naomi, call, let's start somewhere else. Call Karangahaki, Timonga, Teru Nei Taku Ngako. Kua o Henamuri te awa uh, e mahia nei aku maharahara no pairoa ahau. Uh, e mehi ana ki ngā tohu o nihi o whangare o noho, e noho ana nei o. Oh, sorry, missing up that last bit. So, so hello to everyone. Um, my pipiha, um, I say I'm from Pairoa. Um, I actually only moved to Pairoa when I was 15 and only lived there three years. Um, but my beautiful parents um, are still there and have been there for 22 years. So it's where I go home. So it's what I call home. It's where I say I'm from. And the, the maunga there, the mountain, Karangahake, is what does my heart. Um, the river there, Ohinamuri, um, is where I sit when I'm troubled. Um, and those have been precious places for me. Um, thanks for having us. Thanks for your welcome. Um, it is a privilege to be here this morning. And as Nathan said, we're, um, we're just kind of wanting to both have a little chat. I won't talk long, I promise. I've only got two pages of notes, but they're handwritten. Yeah? No, I, I'll go fast. Um, but just, just wanting to each share a little bit of what we're passionate about. And for me, I wanted to start with a simple statement of Jesus that he says kind of near the start of his ministry. It's found in several places, but in Matthew 4, um, from verse 18, it says, As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And here it is, verse 19 of Matthew 4. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. I am so passionate about the spiritual life and living out our lives for Jesus. And I believe the simple statement of Jesus, come follow me and I will send you, captures the essence of the spiritual life in two movements. An inward movement toward God, come follow me. And an outward movement of love for the world, I will send you to fish for people. And these two movements are in relation to one another. They're like breathing in and breathing out. We need both in order to experience life. So we breathe in, ha kiroto. We move towards God. We take time to be with him, to worship, to be still and listen, to read the word, to breathe in the presence of God. And then that outward movement, ha kiwaho. We move in love towards others, caring for those around us, our community, the people that God has placed in our path, living that inward spiritual life, the taking God in and breathing him out to those around us, this movement in towards God and this movement out towards others, the two movements of the spiritual life. And I believe that as the people of God that we must be engaged in both of these things. Only when both are in rhythm do we experience life. When you breathe, you can't just do one or the other. You can't just breathe in. You know, like you fill up and, and you puff up and you kind of become no use. You might explode. We were created not just to breathe in, but to live out our spiritual life in the world that we are in. If we only breathe out, there's eventually there's nothing left. There's nothing to give. As salvationists, I believe often we're really good um, at the breathing out. 
the people, we're a doing people. And um, I see that here modelled well. We're a servant people, we're a giving people. There are so many people giving so much of themselves, which is beautiful, and how our spiritual life is meant to be lived out. But we also need to remember to do the breathing in as well, the coming close to God, the getting to know him, the come, follow me, come. We also can't do any breathing out if we haven't taken a breath in first. I believe that that come, follow me the formation of ourselves before God, of knowing him, of letting him speak into our lives, letting him transform us and form us, is actually the, the basis of the spiritual life. Because we have nothing to give if we don't do that. In 1 John 4 verse 19, isn't that interesting? 4.19, the same as Matthew. Didn't notice that before. 1 John. First John is one of my favorite books in the Bible. If you want to know about love, go to First John. But John says, we love because he first loved us. In order to be able to show God's love for others, we have to know that love for ourselves. In order to go fish for people, we must know truly and deeply to the core of who we are that he loves us, we must come follow him. We must know this love for ourselves to the depths of our being. And this happens in quiet personal time with God, in worship, in silence, in solitude, in prayer, in the word. Here we find who we truly are in God, how deeply loved we are, which then frees us up to love those around us with that same kind of love. We can't give what we don't have. Ha kiroto. We must breathe in. We must spend that time with God. We must let him form us. Ha kiwaho. That actually just naturally brings us to a place of living that out to people because God transforms our heart to be loving of others. And we learn to hear him better as we spend time with him. And so we notice when his spirit is guiding us to give out to others in our spiritual life. I'm so passionate about the spiritual life, about it being both an inward movement and an outward movement. And I'm keen to help people discover how to make that inward movement themselves leading towards an outward movement. So I think Nathan's gonna come join me. Oh, he already has, look at that. Um, and I wanna provide some space for us this morning um, to just reflect perhaps on the question, how's the rhythm, how's the movements of our spiritual life going? Am I breathing in? Am I spending time with God? Am I letting him form me? Am I breathing out? Am I showing that love that I'm experiencing to those around me? But it must start with the breathing in, otherwise we have nothing to give. And in Psalm 42 it says, As the deer pants or thirsts for the water, so my soul longs for you, God. Or we might paraphrase it to fit our breathing metaphor to say as the drowning man gasps for air so my soul longs to breathe you in God to spend time with you am I breathing him in am I taking that time am I breathing out There's a call to salvationists that was put out, I think this was a while ago now, but this was by the International Spiritual Life Commission. And it says, the vitality of our spiritual life as a movement will be seen and tested in our turning to the world in evangelism and service, but the springs of our spiritual life are to be found in our turning to God and worship in the disciplines of life in the spirit and in the study of God's word. So Nathan and I are going to sing a wee song, and you might want to ask that question, God, 
Am I breathing you in? And perhaps if I need to breathe in a little more in order to breathe out, maybe reflect with God on what that might look like for you. God has made each of us different and the way he forms us comes in different ways. And I'm so passionate about it that we'll, we'll spend some time, um, I'm sure, over the next years talking about how we can do that. Um, but right now, to just come before God and go, if that desperation isn't there, it's, is my soul longing for you, God? Well, maybe I just need to start there and say, God, I need that longing again. You might want to just reflect where you are. You might want to come and pray. And we'll sing together. We thank you for the chance to gather as your people. And Father, as we, we're entering a new year, um, we're facing change, God. We're facing so much being different in our world. Father, please draw us to you. Please remind us of um, your love as we come and we follow you and we come into your presence to be transformed by you. We make space in our day to sit with you, to be still, so that we might go out as you send us. 
people full of your love, knowing your love deeply ourselves so that we can share it with others. I just pray a blessing over Whangarei Kōa, over Whangarei community. And we just bless you, Father, and we thank you because you are so good and we get to know you like this. That's pretty amazing. We praise your name, God. Amen. So I'm going to invite, I think, the band <laughs> to come and play our closing song. Oh, look. We're going to stand and sing, I'll go in the strength of the Lord. We've sat here and we've taken in, we've, we've breathed life and we've been spiritually filled this morning and now it's our opportunity to head out, head out the doors and go in the strength of the Lord and share God's love with our community, however that might be for you. going to watch um, the video, The Blessing Aotearoa, as our benediction this morning. Um, and as we leave, there is chilled water at the back that we can share this morning together as we, um, instead of a cup of tea. So just sit or stand and just watch this
blessing. Amen. Thank you.
he honore, he gloria, he hallelujah ki te atua, he maumaru, he atapai, he manaki ki rungi i te matua te whenua, he hakaaro pai, he hakaaro hui, he hakaaro roa ki ngā tamata katoa, nō reira ki a tau ki a tātou katoa, te atapai o tō tāte wariki o i ukaraiti, me te aroha o te atua, me te whipunga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu, ake, 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 ake. Amen.